Hey guys, we're back. Today we're here with Paul Barton, a famous loudspeaker, headphone and earphone designer, and today we're going to learn all about headphones and earphones. Paul, I'm wearing a couple different styles of headphones and earphones. Mm -hmm. Can you describe some of the different styles that I have here? Yeah, this one here is an in-ear. The next one here is an on-ear. Both of them are passive. This is also passive over the ear. And this is an active headphone over the ear with active noise cancelling and Bluetooth capability. And I notice you also have another one in your hands. This is a fifth category, which we call a true wireless in-ear earphone. And it is very comfortable to wear and has a hook over the ear, which makes it very useful when you are doing active things. You mentioned that some of these were passive and others active. Can you describe some of the differences? Well, the difference is that the active one has an amplifier built in, which is powered by batteries inside the headphone. These here are powered by the batteries or the power that's in your, either your phone that you can plug it into or into a headphone amp. And in the next video, we're going to talk about why you may want to select one type or another type of headphones or earphones. And now we're back with Paul Byrne, and we're going to learn how to wear earphones properly. So Paul, how do I get these things in my ear? Well, first you've got to choose the cord you want to use, and in this case, in this model, you can choose where the wire goes over the ear, which can be used when you're somewhat active. And then this cord is a little more convenient, so you don't have to hook it over the ear, but not as convenient when you're active. So that would be the choice you would have to make. So I've chosen the straight cable just to make my life a little bit more convenient. What you do is with this foam tip, and this foam tip is a fairly sophisticated technology that was originally developed by 3M. What it does is you can squeeze it together, make it much smaller than your ear canal, and there are different sizes available for the best comfort. And once it's squeezed down like this, you put it in your ear, and with body temperature, it expands into the ear and becomes very soft and very comfortable. You mentioned having a good seal. What is a good seal and why is it important? Well, a good seal is when this foam, after the body temperature activates the expansion of the foam, opens up into the ear. And two things uh, are a benefit. One is you don't hear sounds from outside getting in, and the other is you get much better bass response. In fact, the bass response that these headphones were tuned to. So I'm just going to remove this from the cable to help better illustrate. So now that I have this guy off, what do I do? Well, first of all, let me take this cord from you. What you need to do is squeeze the tip with your one hand, reach around and pull up your pinna, and now try and insert that. And give it a good push. And hold it for a little bit so that you can feel it expanding in the ear. Okay. And now you can let go and it should just continue to expand once it warms up and seals the ear. And you can actually hear the sound around you in that ear diminish. Yeah, I think I got a, a really good fit here. So what would the next step be? Put on your music. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Paul. In all the years that I've worn earphones, i never known this trick. And it's really cool feeling. I can't hear anything out of this side and this side is perfectly normal. In our next video, we're going to be putting on headphones and learn how to get those properly fitting as well. We're back with Paul and we're going to learn about how to put on headphones, both on-ear and over-the-ear. This is the on-ear which sits on top of your ear and this is the over-the-ear which sits completely around the ear. Let's start with the on-ears, put them on and make sure that it's straight up and down on, your t on the top of your head. Some people put them on, they, they fit too far back and you won't get a good, uh, good seal if that's the case. Now you can see that you can expand the headband a bit just to cover the ear completely. I would wiggle them just a little bit just so that they seat properly because once your body temperature starts to warm up the foam that's in there, it'll contour and give you a very good seal, which improves the bass response and makes the bass response what was intended. These feel really nice on the head, 
but let's try on these over-the-ear ones. Well, you had those on and they were quite comfortable, but some people over a period of time, the pressure on their pinna, which is this part here, can over time start to hurt. We've taken care of that with this headphone design, um, which has a little cavity in here, so that when you put it over the ear, the pinna, this part of your ear, actually doesn't get crushed. It just sits freely in there, making it very comfortable for a very long time. So try it there, and you can notice that the right and left are marked inside the ear pad. And then you can expand the headband and make sure that your ear has been tucked inside that cavity. And then wiggle it around a little bit and you should be good to go. And I can feel my entire ear inside the headphone itself? And it's sort of floating in there. You don't feel it being pressured. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for getting me fitted, Paul. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the active noise cancelling that these headphones have. Paul, you mentioned that this model in particular, the M4U8, has active noise cancelling. Can you please describe what that means? On this headphone, it's a hybrid noise cancelling system, which means it uses four microphones. Two microphones on the outside, which are feed-forward microphones, and there are two microphones, one on each of the inside of the ear cups, called feedback microphones. And what that really does is, because you're using the four microphone system, you get much better attenuation or noise isolation from the outside noise that you may be around. I mean, you can even wear these headphones with the noise cancelling on without listening to music on an airplane and get a much more refreshing flight. So you mentioned there is microphones on the inside and the outside of an active noise cancelling headphone. Are these microphones listening to the outside sounds around us? The outside listens to the sound outside and feeds that in combination with the signal it's picking up on the inside and manipulates that signal so that it creates on the speaker inside the headphone a signal that is completely opposite of the signal that's on the outside of the headphone. Hence, it will actually work to cancel the sound. The headphones, not only if you're listening to music, are not only playing the music, but they're also playing the opposite of the sound that's outside of you, causing a complete cancellation of any sounds around you and the only sounds you hear are the sounds of the music that's playing. So in the past I've worn active noise cancelling headphones and I felt pressure on my ears. Could you describe that? Well, yeah, it's a sensation that many people feel. Uh, it's really not pressure. Uh, the sensation of pressure is the same as the sensation that you get when there is no noise and that is what people are interpreting. Uh, on these headphones, uh, I've tuned the noise cancelling so that it's not too uh, aggressive in noise cancelling, which causes some people to have discomfort. The noise cancelling we put into here is sort of optimized so that the, the vast majority of people will appreciate the noise cancelling without any negative sensation of pressure. I just want to mention one other thing about these headphones. The two outside microphones that are on the outside of the ear cup can be used uh, when, let's say you're on an airplane and the stewardess comes up and wants to know what you want to eat. Well, instead of having to take off the headphones, you can push a button on the back of this headphone while, while it's on your head and it will activate the two outside microphones so that you can hear what the person's saying in stereo and it will also mute the music at the same time. So you don't have to take off the headphones in order to communicate back and forth. And then when you push the button again, it goes back to playing music and the active noise cancelling re-engages. Thank you so much, Paul. So in the next video, we're going to learn more about what makes your headphones sound so unique. So I'm back here with Paul, all suited up with eight different types of headphones and earphones. So, Paul, what do all these headphones and earphones have in common? What they do have in common is the way that they are voiced and the way they sound. And what I mean by that is, as a speaker designer, I have a very intimate understanding of what the effects of a room has on the sound reproduction 
of music. Studio musicians and engineers all know what this effect that a room has on listening to speakers in a room. And they don't mix separate mixes to be used on headphones. So what I have done is all of these headphones that have in common is the application of a correction of this distortion that's created because you now don't have a room when you're listening to headphones. What I do is I make the target function or the, the sound of the headphone emulate what that sound would be if it was being played back on speakers in a room. So do you have a name for this common voice between the headphones and earphones? Yes, we call this feature room feel, which is sort of self-explanatory. It makes you feel as though the sound were being played back on speakers in a room, which is the way it was originally intended. Thank you, Paul, for taking the time to teach us about headphones and earphones. If you want to learn even more about these headphones and earphones, you could go to PSB Speakers or NAD Electronics websites.